Hey, what's going on, Guardians? My name is The Black Link, and today is Thursday, December 10th, 2020, and it's time for another issue of the Bungie Weekly Blog, This Week at Bungie. And man, what a mighty week it's been. We had a hot fix go live earlier this week, did a couple of quality of life changes. We had the unveiling and release of the mighty Hawk Moon from Destiny 1. That exotic quest is live in the game right now. You can go and start it at the Spider. And we had a major, major article drop from Joe Blackburn earlier this week that talked a lot about sunsetting the future of rewards in Destiny 2. We learned that some other D1 classics like Shadow Price, The Swarm, and The Palindrome will be coming in future seasons and even more. If you happen to miss a lot of that stuff, we do have videos covering everything we just talked about right here on the channel. As usual, you'll be able to find links to those down in the description box below. Additionally, earlier today, we had the trailer for The Dawning Go Live. Of course, The Dawning is the winter event here in the world of Destiny 2, and it's going to be going live next Tuesday. Starting next week, Ava Levante is coming to town. She's got new cookie recipes and new gifts for all the good guardians even if they did adopt darkness powers. Now, for those of you Guardians who may be new to the Dawning, it is a winter event that's basically going to have you gathering ingredients by defeating enemies like Hive or the Taken, or using special abilities like getting arc kills or getting kills with swords and stuff like that, to use as ingredients while you're baking cookies and treats. And you'll be doing this with the use of the Holiday Oven. By all accounts, the event is going to be very similar to the way the Dawning ran last year. Ava's going to give you your holiday oven, and then like I said before, you just go out, you get kills, you complete challenges, you get weapon kills and whatnot. You'll get different ingredients, and you can use those ingredients to bake different treats. And along with this, you can earn Dawning Spirit by completing missions, bounties, and recipes. With personal and communal goals available, the more spirit that Guardians generate by completing these challenges, the better the rewards that Ava will have for everyone to share. It's always a real fun event. The tower gets dressed up in a nice kind of Christmas sort of theme. Eververse gets all kinds of new stuff. There are usually new ghost shells, new exotic ships, new exotic sparrows, and we got to see a lot of that in the Dawning trailer here. Additionally, something we talked about in last week's TWAB, thanks to the community really showing up for the Game to Give charity, we actually got a sneak peek at what some of the donning gear is going to look like ahead of time. We got to see what the Hunter, Warlock, and Titan armor sets for the donning this time around are going to look like. We also got to find out about a brand new legendary weapon that's going to be dropping with this year's donning, the new legendary fusion rifle, Glacioclasm which will be available as an earnable reward during the dawning itself. This fusion rifle is also going to be introduced with random rolls available so you can get multiple different rolls of this gun. And as far as the looks of it, we got to see a quick clip of it in the dawning trailer itself. Pretty neat looking fusion rifle, I love the color scheme on it. But then again, I've always been real partial to the dawning armor sets and motifs here in Destiny 2. Additionally, Ava is going to have a new exotic ship that you'll be able to upgrade throughout the event to change its look. You'll be able to customize the engine's streams, different spawn effects, and unlock a new animated shader that's going to be unique to the ship. That animated shader part is real exciting to me. Ava has also set up a fun new celebration for this year's dawning that involves even more gifts for you, the player. As the community generates dawning spirit by completing activities, you will be able to progress a special community pursuit with your cookie skills and then find new gifts waiting for you underneath a dawning tree. It'll be the big glowy one. They say you won't be able to miss it. And while they don't go on to spoil any of the surprises that are going to be held inside, they do say you may find some upgrade materials in these gifts. If the donning winds up being a great way to farm out upgrade materials, fantastic. I was starting to get a little light on those anyway. They go on to say that there will also be some fun stuff at the Eververse store as well. All of the new items that are going to be available in the store will be available at some point for Bright Dust, with the exception of the Glee Barrage and Merry Maker Weapon Ornaments, and Happy Trails Finisher, which will be available for Silver. And then we get to see a great preview of the Sparrows, Ghost Shells, and a ship that you'll be able to get over the course of the Dawning event. Overall, things are looking pretty good, and I can't wait to dive into the Dawning starting on Reset next week. But alright, that's not the only big news we've got to talk about today. In a fantastic change that I was very much waiting for, we get to learn a bit more about Shadebinder melees and updates that are going to be coming in hot for them. In a section titled Super Smash Warlock Melee, 
Love the name. Bungie announced a future, at least partial, rollback to the cutting of range on the Shadebinder melee. For Penumbral Blast, the projectile range is going to be increased by about 37%, and the minimum distance to cast the ranged melee is going to be reduced by 32%. This will allow you to throw the ranged melee closer to targets. So basically, right now, when you're a little too close to targets, rather than doing the actual Penumbral Blast, you'll do the lock-on sort of slap thing instead, which can be a little bit annoying in PvE. So in next week's hotfix, they're basically going to be pushing these changes to make it so that Penumbral Blast is getting at least a little bit of its former range back, and you're going to be able to activate it while closer to enemies. Great changes there. Although, I really wish, rather than saying they've increased the range by 37%, they just told us, like they did with the nerf, what the, what the actual distance on the melee is going to be. Give us meters so we can actually just measure it out that way. Either way, really happy about this change. I felt after they made the previous changes, the previous nerfs to the amount of time you stay frozen in stasis in the Crucible, they didn't really need to do too much else with Shadebinder. The class was fine as is, so I'm really happy that they're bringing back some of that Warlock melee range, especially for PvE. The melee just felt bad in PvE after the nerf. Good stuff there. Moving on from there, do remember that at least as of right now, Trials of Osiris is scheduled to officially come back next Friday, December 18th. At least, assuming no other game-breaking glitch makes its way to the surface. Although, Bungie does go to mention that because of the delay of launching Trials, a few changes were made to the reward schedule they originally had. During the first four weeks of Trials, the Flawless Chest will drop an Adept Weapon, while the fifth week will drop an Armor Piece, with subsequent weeks switching the rewards back and forth between Adept Weapons and Armor, as they had previously mentioned in earlier TWABs. Additionally, Adept Weapon mods will drop each week, so make sure if you guys are going to be running Trials, you're aware of all of that. Now beyond that, they mentioned a bunch of other changes and issues that they've currently got on their docket, but there was one more than any other that I kind of wanted to talk at least a little bit about. If you guys were farming for True Prophecy, you might have noticed after the hotfix that you couldn't really find a whole lot of them when they were dropping pretty regularly before. Well, I'm here to tell you you're not crazy. True Prophecy has been removed from the world loot pool, and Bungie confirms this is intentional. Meaning, I think the only attainable 120 hand cannons right now are the ones in the Iron Banner, and Iron Banner is going away next week, so I find it a little bit weird that they removed the True Prophecy, which was a really good farmable 120 hand cannon, one a lot of people were really excited about and haven't really replaced it with too much. Definitely kind of an odd choice there. Hopefully you farmed up some real good rolls before the hotfix that took it out. But alright Guardians, here we go. That's it for some of the biggest bits of news contained in this week's issue of the Bungie Weekly Blog. There was a lot more talked about in there, including the notion that Bungie is aware of FPS issues currently impacting PC play. If you'd like to go and read some of the rest of that kind of stuff, of course there's a link to the TWAP down in the description box below. But that is going to be it for this one, Guardians. That's the news, and those are my thoughts. Be sure to leave me yours down in the comment section below. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to drop a like. Make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell to stay up to date with all the latest stuff we're putting out. But not for now. Thank you all so much for watching. And as always, I am the Black Link. You Guardians, stay frosty. And to you Xbox Series X and PlayStation 5 players out there, and the Series S, I suppose, enjoy the enhanced FPS and FOV. Sincerely, a PC bro who's real happy for you. I'll catch y'all later.